Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my back deck. I was hoping that I could take just a couple minutes of your time tonight to remind us of a few things. Yesterday, I asked us to keep in mind that God has not forgotten us. God has not forgotten you. God not only knows everything that you're experiencing right now and everything that you're about to experience, he knows everything you've been through. He knows everything I've been through. I'd like us to look at a strange idea today, and that is to do something different, and that is to talk to ourselves. I know that sounds weird, but we read it very often in the scripture. For example, in Psalm 42, David speaks to himself many times. I'll just read you a couple of verses. He says, why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Put your hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. He's speaking to himself. It's something I find I need to do very often. I need to remind myself of who I am in Christ. I need to remind myself of the price that was paid for me and that God not only knows my situation, but is leading me through this situation and wants to provide for me. And certainly he wants to do that for you as well. David again speaks this way. Psalm 103. Just listen for a moment. First five verses. This is a, a fairly long psalm and it's rich. But I just want us to listen to the first five verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul. David's telling himself to bless the Lord, to praise God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Wow. Spend some time and just meditate on those verses. But understand what David is doing. He's speaking to himself. He's, he's imploring himself to, to get with it, to, to get his eyes off of the ground, to get his eyes off of his feet, and to look up and to look to God and to remember the one who created all of this. Not only did he create all these things, but that he redeemed David, that he redeemed you, that he redeemed me. I'm not going to take you verse by verse through this, but simply to say it's so important that we take this time to remind ourselves of who God is and what he's already done for us. For some of you, these last two plus weeks have been far worse than an inconvenience, I realize. For some, it's been an inconvenience. Maybe you had a little trouble getting some food, or maybe you had a little trouble getting some toilet paper, or you don't like having to stay home. For others, you've been laid off, or maybe you're a doctor or a nurse, you work in a hospital, and, and the hours that are required of you now suddenly are extreme, and everything you hear says that the days ahead are not going to get easier. They're probably going to become more difficult. Certainly no inconvenience. These are hard times, and we've seen hard times before. Certainly the church has seen hard times before. Our country's seen hard times before. The world has seen hard times before. And while we don't know how difficult the coming days may be, we certainly have heard the reports. You probably saw yesterday, President Trump said that the quarantine is going to be extended for another 30 days. The Surgeon General just this morning said that this next week and the week beyond could become very difficult. I'm not exactly sure what very difficult means, but when it comes out of the mouth of the Surgeon General, I listen. Our church has not been hit in a, in a powerful way or in a big way so far by this coronavirus, but it's very likely that in the coming weeks that may well happen. How do we, as the Bible says, Peter says, to gird up the loins of our mind? What does that mean? It means get ready for battle, get ready to run, get ready for the hard times. You know, we'll often say, or I quote it very often, uh, when, a, when a believer dies. We read in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians that 
we don't grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. We don't. We still grieve. We still go through difficult times. There's still sorrow. But we don't have to like everybody else who has no hope. We have real hope. Our hope has an object, and that object is Jesus Christ, who's done everything for us. So as we walk into these coming days, what do we say to ourselves? Well, certainly like David, we need to praise the Lord. We need to bless the Lord and tell ourselves to do it, to get on with it. Bless the Lord. We may say, count your blessings. Look around, count your blessings. Not just the material ones. Look, you live in America, we all do, and it's easy to look around and count our blessings unless we're comparing what we have or don't have to someone else. But more importantly, as Christians, how important it is for us to count our blessings, to remember that God our Father has already done everything for us by sending his son, Jesus, to pay the price for our sins. As Paul asks in Romans chapter 8, how will he then not also give us all things? Why would he not strengthen us during the difficult times? Why would he not protect us as we walk through these difficult times? He never promised that no one would get sick. He never promised that those things wouldn't happen. But rather he said, he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. And so it's important, as David said, to bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everything that's in me, he says, bless his holy name. Oh, Father, thank you for all that you've given to me. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the way you've worked in my life up until today. You've never left me. You've never forsaken me. You're always faithful. And I know that you're going to take me through even this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Don't forget all of his benefits. Don't forget all the things that he's done. Don't forget all the times that we got sick and then we're well again. Don't forget all the times that we might have wondered, where's the money going to come from? And then we had it. Don't forget the people in our lives that we love and who love us. Don't forget the brothers and sisters in the Lord who we have this great relationship with. What a family. Bless the Lord who forgives all of your iniquities. Even if he had overlooked one of my iniquities, I would be a man without hope. But he's forgiven all of my iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit, from destruction. And he crowns you as one of the king's kids with loving kindness and tender mercies. And he satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. God's at work in our lives, friends. Don't give up. It's okay to turn off the news, but at the same time, let's remember difficult times will come. But you and I know the king of the universe. You and I know the one who paid the price for our sins. You and I know that one way or the other, we will leave planet Earth. By death, by rapture, at some point, we are leaving and we're going to be with him. But he's appointed that we be here now as his ambassadors, children of light in a dark world, to bring the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to our neighbors to the people we've known, to our friends, the people we know at work. You may not be working right now, but you certainly know those people. Continue to bear good witness before them. Continue to remind them how much Jesus loves them. You might just find that they're listening right now. Father, I just ask for each one of my friends who's watching right now, Lord, and ask that you would continue to guide them, strengthen them, in this walk that they're in right now, Lord, you know exactly what we are in the midst of right now, and you're the only one who will take us through. And so we thank you, Lord. We don't, we don't want to be like the rest of the world. We don't want to be frightened like the rest of the world, but to continually have our hope renewed in you and in you alone. And so, Lord, be with each one. Give us direction, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, all.